So in this lesson, we're going to have a look at uh, the two techniques we've studied, the oblique projection and the isometric projection. And we're going to do a piece of work where we do a product study, and it'll, this will enable us to compare the two projection techniques. So what you'll need is your sketching equipment and an everyday product that you feel comfortable in sketching in oblique projection and isometric. So I've chosen a simple uh, plug here from an iPhone charger and the first thing I'm going to do before I start sketching in either um, projection is just conduct a small 2D study in the top left of my page to help me get the proportions correct on my sketch or on both sketches. You can see here at this stage I'm using quite a lot of construction lines to help ensure that I get the proportion correct and the features placed in the right position. So I'm going to refer back to this for each of my two sketches. And also if you place a line wrong or don't quite get a feature right, you can adjust that at this stage nice and easily. Right, that looks okay. I've not added too much detail, just the, you know, there's like this moulding line here from this component that's pressed in. I've just left the, is the basic um, profile. So, what I'm going to do next is sketch my oblique view. So you want to try and translate that proportion across. And here, you're essentially sketching the same profile you've you just sketched because with the oblique view you obviously look at square on to the face and then project your end and plan elevations off that at 45 degrees and you really see when you do the two sketches the the difference uh, in the realistic appearance of the two um, projection techniques and it really makes ob oblique projection stand out as something that looks very false Again, just 45 degrees. Choosing my construction lines. If you don't get something quite right, don't worry about it. Add the thickness, the depth of the material of the product. Just thinking about those parallel lines where applicable. So that would obviously go off in that direction. Bring the line in there. Okay, so that's our oblique view. Now obviously in the oblique view, um, one thing that you won't see, which doesn't uh, help the projection, uh, projection look realistic, is the pins of the plug. And that's the reason why I chose this as my object, because there's a, easy, there's a feature there that's really identifiable um, in the isometric view, but in the oblique you don't see it clearly. So what I'll do over here is sketch my isometric view. So just follow that technique you've been practicing 
we did in the previous lesson we do 30 degrees so it's a bit harder here to translate that proportion but you can use your finger calipers if you like just to take a rough rough gauge for your sketch so I'm really overemphasizing the different techniques you should be using here to try and help with your with your sketch so um, that space will fit so what I've actually sketched here is a frame at the front of my sketch that I'm going to build the pins in the, pl the plug because you will actually see those in the isometric view and then I'm just going to bring this back here for the overall depth of the product so it can start looking a bit confused when you've got quite a lot of lines and ordinarily I would just sketch this freehand but um, to demonstrate the techniques to you I'm, I'm, I'm following them through so we're just going to divide this up it's going to look like a very complex wire frame in a minute but it will um, really help construct the sketch remember your circles are elliptical profiles And then there's this little detail here for removing the plug from a socket. So again, if you've got to add features whilst you're learning, take the time to add the correct construction lines to help proportion everything. Right, now we're on to this face. <coughs> I'm going to have a look at adding these pins. So what I need to do first, and you'll really start to see when you're doing this, how having those two um, lines off the horizontal at 30 degrees really gives even proportion of the three faces. Because basically there, um, you've got symmetry following through the, the, the drawing. And I'm always sketching my my parallel lines to just help construct my overall view. So this is just the back profile of one pin. Do the same down here, making sure I get those lines in vertical. Okay, I've gone a little bit wide on these pins, so I'm just going to narrow that down a little bit. At this stage I can do that. And then what you need to do uh, here, and this is where you, adding features can get complicated, but I need a series of lines that are parallel with this 30 degree line here coming out to project the pin of the plug. And if you can see here, the pin projects about a similar distance as the thickness of the plug. So you can use your finger calipers again and get a rough gauge for those uh, bottom pins on there. So this is just demonstrating the technique with a with a, a phone charger a plug. You can obviously select um, products of your choice for this. And then it, it's a bit easier for me to add that second frame because I can sketch those construction lines across, bring these lines out here, and then I've got that pin corrected, uh, correctly proportioned there. And then the last thing is the earth pin is always slightly longer so when you plug something in, if there's a fault with it the first thing that's connected is the earth so you're nice and safe um, so we'll add that in now as well and 
And again, you can see it's slightly longer. So you can use finger calipers. And I've just projected my sketch a little bit longer on that earth pin. Then you can like have a look at your sketch and think, right, what details might I want to add? Um, that bottom line doesn't look quite parallel. Just tweak that a little bit. And they've actually got a slight uh, taper to the tip. So we'll add that in. Same on the, uh, the bottom. And there's actually a divided section that's painted, coated on the uh, polymer, molding, polymer molding. So we'll transfer that across. Okay. And then to finish that off, <coughs> just going to take my fine liner. We've been very specific, we'd add that chamfer to the edge of the pins on all of the views. And then the isometric one, because there's a bit more detail, that's quite complicated to work through. Just take care not to accentuate any of your construction lines. So I'm using a, a fine liner here, not a sharpie. Make sure you don't do this section as sharpie. Otherwise all the little features will become too blurred and you won't be able to distinguish them. Okay, so we'll just finish that piece of work off by labelling the correct views. So we've got our 2D sketch or 2D study, oblique projection, and then our isometric projection. So that's what you should be aiming to do. So select an everyday object uh, with some simple features that you can have a go at doing a comparison page comparing the two techniques. And you can really see the difference and the realism you get from uh, sketching in isometric over using that oblique technique uh, that many people, when they start sketching, use as a method for constructing um, 3D views. Okay, it's almost a, an instinctive way of doing it, but this is a more once you learn the technique, this is more logical and much more realistic because you've got that even representation of the three different elevations.